So it seems that after Apple has absolutely annihilated Intel, they have shifted their focus to Qualcomm because Timothy is coming for you guys. We've been hearing some murmurs about this for a while, but now we have some confirmed info that yes, Apple is working on their own modems for the iPhone so they don't have to be as dependent on Qualcomm. And of course, this is amazing news because you might think, hey, isn't this only gonna benefit Timothy? But no, it's gonna benefit us as consumers in a big way too. And so without further ado, let's delve into this. Make sure to like and subscribe, click that button notification. And with that being said, let's just tuck in. So this information comes from Bloomberg, Mark Gurman, very reliable source. He claims that Johnny Saruji, that's his surname, I'm sorry if I butchered that, but anyways, Apple Senior Vice President of Hardware Technologies had a little meeting with other Apple employees regarding this matter. And he basically confirms that yes, they have started developing their own internal cellular modems for their iPhones. Of course, since Apple has only started developing these, I don't think we'll see them anytime soon. And so the earliest iPhone we can expect to have Apple modems is the 2023 iPhone, but it could be later as I'll discuss in a bit. Now, after Johnny makes this announcement, Qualcomm's shares drop 4.4%. So there's gonna be a hit to Qualcomm with this upgrade and they could possibly see a similar fate to Intel. Actually, I take that back because nobody can be as bad as Intel. So why is Apple doing this? Well, there are a number of reasons, but of course it comes down to money. So right now, Qualcomm takes 11% of Apple's revenue because of the 5G modems in the iPhone 12. And in fact, the 5G modem is probably one of the most expensive parts in the new iPhone. In fact, it's around $96 per phone, which obviously doesn't sound that much, but when you take into account the cost of the other parts, this is actually quite a lot of money for a modem especially. And of course, Timothy being the businessman he is, he wants to save as many costs as possible. And so making modems in house is gonna save Apple a lot of money down the line. Though I do want to mention that as far as I know, Qualcomm does own a lot of the patents to 5G modems, so Apple would at least be paying a royalty fee to Qualcomm, but it won't be as much as using their own products. Now, another potential reason why Apple is going into the modem business is because Qualcomm and Apple genuinely hate each other. They have beef, they're enemies, they don't like each other at all. So for several years, Apple was involved in a patent dispute with Qualcomm and this lawsuit went on forever, but then Apple was forced to come to a settlement because Qualcomm was the exclusive provider of 5G in the mobile space and so they needed 5G on the iPhone 12 and so they kind of had to succumb to the power of Qualcomm. And of course, Apple does not want that. So this was obviously a temporary measure and they had bigger plans. And we noticed this back in 2019, I believe, when Apple bought Intel's modem business. Because of course, while this lawsuit was happening, Apple couldn't use Qualcomm's modems. And so they were forced to use Intel's inferior modems, which everybody hated, including me. But then of course, when Apple made the move to 5G, they went back to Qualcomm and so they bought Intel's modem business for one billion dollars. That's a lot of money. That's a ton of money. And so, yes, now we can see where all that money is going into. Now, this settlement with Qualcomm is a six year licensing agreement. And so I do think that maybe Apple is going to be forced legally to have Qualcomm modems in their iPhones for at least six years. So five more years of Qualcomm modems. And then possibly after that, we will start to see Apple's in-house modems in the iPhone. So yes, way into the future. And hopefully by then, these modems will be pretty good because as I said, they bought Intel's modem business and Intel wasn't really that good at making modems. So hopefully Apple can sprinkle some of their magic on these modems and make them better than the Qualcomm modems already available. But of course, some of you are wondering, hey, enough of the business talk. 
tell me how this benefits the consumer. Well, number one, like I said, this saves Apple costs. And so because it saves them costs, we are unlikely to see a price increase because of 5G modems in the near future. Because that's the main reason the iPhone 12 went up in price. The X55 modem in here is very expensive. And so Apple was forced to make the iPhone 12, the standard iPhone, $100 more than the previous model. And so with Apple making their in-house modems, when 6G eventually becomes a thing for some reason, there won't be a price increase because Apple would obviously be able to save costs. And so we get the fast new speeds at the same price. So it's a win-win situation for the consumer. And of course, keep in mind that with the money Apple saves by making their own modems, they can use that money elsewhere and give us more exciting features at possibly the same price. For example, Apple's allegedly giving us a MacBook next year with a new design and mini LED at the same price, because guess what? The M1 is so cheap to make that it offsets the higher costs of mini LED and of course, manufacturing a new design. And so the same thing can happen here and I am very much looking forward to that. Number two, it's way more efficient. So of course we've seen what Apple can do with their hardware and software integration. And one of the biggest issues with the 5G modems in the iPhone 12 is that they're very, very, very power hungry. In fact, you lose up to three hours of battery life with 5G on the iPhone 12 series. And honestly, that kind of makes 5G useless in my opinion, because what's the point of having all these fast speeds on your phone when it sacrifices the most important thing about a phone, and of course, that's battery life. And so, much like the M1 chip or the A14, these in-house modems can be really, really efficient, and they can work really well with Apple's hardware and software, and so you will basically lose little to no battery life while using these higher speeds, which is obviously a great thing for the consumer, and of course, will push more people to use 5G and maybe 6G in the near future. Of course, I will admit, I have said many times that 5G is utterly useless, but at the same time, it will soon become the new standard, much like 4G is right now. And so for me to accept it wholeheartedly, I want high speeds, but without any toll on battery life. And finally, the third reason is competition. Competition is a great thing for us consumers because as we saw with the M1 chip, it stirred up the computer industry and it's gonna get AMD and Intel to possibly work harder with their next chips and possibly compete with the M1's performance. And so the same thing happens here. Qualcomm is right now a monopoly when it comes to the modem business. They don't need to really strive to make better hardware because they're pretty much the only vendor that offers reasonable stuff at a reasonable price. And so pretty much every company like Apple is forced to use Qualcomm's tech. But of course, enter the Apple modem and finally Qualcomm has some competition and so that's going to force them to give better modems to Android phones and possibly even other Apple hardware in the near future. And so that's pretty much it in terms of this whole modem kerfuffle and obviously I am looking forward to this because Apple saving costs means less price hikes for us which obviously is a great thing. And of course on that note I'm going to end it here Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, click that notification. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. See you peeps.